Hey everyone, welcome back to Bird Talk with Terrence Mathis. I'm William Brandon. Please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel Atlanta Sports Unlimited and turn on those notifications so you don't miss an episode. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the simplest sports fantasy game on the market. You can pick from multiple sports platforms. And get this, sign up using the code ASU and Prize Picks will 100% match your initial offer up to $100. Download the app for free at the Google Play Store or the App Store. Well, a lot has happened uh, since Terrence and I took our bye week. Yeah. The Falcons are on a two-game losing streak after losing oh. to the Steelers at home, 19-16. to 16. And the Falcons have made a change at quarterback. And after all that, the Falcons are still one game out of first place. So what's wow. your reaction to this wild two weeks? Uh, well, going into the – let's go way back to the Steelers game. Going into that game, I told you it was going to be a physical game. Um, Mike Tomlin – felt that, uh, you know, they wanted to be the bullies in our backyard, yeah. which they were. Um, they played very, very well whatsoever. You know, we're, we're who we are. We played to the fourth quarter, hoping to win the game in the fourth quarter, hoping to win it with a touchdown or, or win it with a field goal or win it with a stop. And, and that's who we are. And that's just, you know, that's rolling the dice. You know, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's snake eyes. And that's the way we've been most of the year. So uh, you can't get too upset about that because of because of that's how Arthur Smith wants to play football. He wants to play smash mouth and, and feel that he can we can wear you down enough and beat you in the fourth quarter. But this is the NFL, baby. Everybody's waiting to get to the fourth quarter. You know, everybody's mindset is win the fourth quarter not just ours. So, you know, we're, we're in a predicament right now. You know, uh, we didn't, I, I didn't think uh, Tampa could go into San Francisco and beat San Francisco. So I knew we would still be, have a chance being there, but I thought we would, would at least you know, probably be leading the division by now. We'd have won the last two games, Yeah, but it is what it is. Um, like you said, since the bye week, a lot has gone on and, uh, seems like Mariota has left the building, <laughs> but you know, uh, it, it's just ironic that we were talking about three weeks ago when emphatically Arthur Smith said, under no circumstances, no circumstances <laughs> would bitter play this year. Remember, we said that, and I said, Ah, yeah. oh, I know there's one circumstance. <laughs> If the owner tells you to play, you're going to have to play. I don't know what made that decision. Um, uh, Coach Smith tried to tell us what made that position, that he's ready. Mm -hmm. He showed us enough in practice. He's a gamer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we don't know that yet. We, we, we just don't know that yet. And, and the thing is, is that uh, a lot of fans are saying about time, about time, about time, about time. But, but. We go back to years ago when I used to say this. There's only two people in the franchise of an NFL team or, or on any team that gets wins and losses. That's the head coach and the quarterback. Yeah. And and yeah. it's unfair to the quarterback because what are you what are you saying is that he's the cause of us losing football games by himself. Yeah. That's what you're saying. And and that's not absolutely and, and in a team game, that's not absolutely true. It could be uncomfortable with a play call. It could be not enough reps at, 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 you know, doing what you have to do in the passing game. It could be just being uncomfortable in the system whatsoever. And, and that all falls on the, the whole uh, football part, the football playing organization from the head coach to the coordinator to the quarterback coach whatsoever, offensive line, receiver coach, whatever. They all had a part into losing these football games. But we're so focused on the premier position at quarterback. But listen now, it's not like our defense is playing lights out. Yeah. At some point, you got to stop somebody in the fourth quarter. At some point, when we have a chance to win a football game, you got to get a three and out, or you got to create a turnover to give us the ball back. 
and not rely on the offense to take the ball down to score or kick a field goal at some point because the only statistic that we're ranked, I still think we're ranked in the top, I'm going to say in the top 15, that is run defense. Everything else, we're at the bottom, at the bottom. But no one wants to talk about that. You know, no one wants to talk about it's a it's a team sport, but it's just but we want to talk about is a it's a quarterback team. It's a quarterback team. He wins all the games, he loses all the games. I get that. And 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 we're gonna go with that. So transitioning to the Ritter era, I like the change because it gives a fresh start and maybe the players will galvanize around. On this young man and play harder for him. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe the passing scheme, play calling changes because he's in the game for the better. Yeah. Does that happen? Or are we going to run the ball 30, 40 times a game and still throw it 10, 12, 15 times a game? I don't know. And if we throw it 10, I don't mind if we throw it 10 or 15 times a game, but are they productive plays? Are there big plays? I haven't seen, I haven't really seen a play over 60, 70 yards like, well, we've seen it against Cincinnati, but I'm talking about on the sideline, we beat man-to-man coverage, we throw it over, he catches it and runs away from a guy. I don't see that consistently. So are we going to be dink and dunk or are we going to be big play passing game or are we going to be a combination of both? We don't know that yet. And if Arthur is who he is. If, um, let me stop calling him by. If Coach Smith is who he is, I don't see much changing in offensive play calling and the offensive scheme. And, uh, I mean, I got to agree with you on that. It doesn't seem like just because they're going to put Ritter in. I kind of got hung up because I was thinking about the Steelers game and that last drive, like you said, the – the defense at some point has to stop somebody because the Falcons chose to kick a field goal instead of going for it. And that put them down by three, but they had to go uh, uh, the whole length of the field. And they did. Yes. (laughs) And ran the clock out and and got what they needed to. So yeah, the defense, like those those big free agents that we signed in the off season, um, we're not hearing their name regularly on big plays, big third downs or we're not right. hearing it. You know, the guys that we signed right. that we thought would make those plays aren't making them. So they're going to have to step right. up at some point. Um, Ritter, I'm glad that he's, he's getting an opportunity to start, especially from what I'm, what I'm hearing um, about Mariota. I don't know how, how true it is, but I hope that, like you said, the players can get behind him and at least maybe even they, they do play harder. I know that Drake right. London and um, Ritter had some type of, friendlier relationship because they hang out right they hang out on the regular so that could hopefully Mm -hmm. potentially help out with their chemistry on the field but it's going to be tough he's going to new orleans for his first game (laughs) that's what i'm saying that's a tough that's a tough time to ask a rookie quarterback to start his first game in new orleans against the division rivals against that defense yeah and that's tough but we're going to find out you know, at the end of the day, we're going to find out what this young man is made of. Win or loss, we're going to find out what he's made of. And and if you want to put a young guy in a situation to to try to salvage a season or even win a division with four games left, you're asking him a whole lot, asking for a whole lot from this young man. That means everybody, everybody got to play above their abilities right now to, to win these next four. Here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You have Four games left, four games left. And I was talking to, uh, I was talking to um, one of the players last night at an event. And I said, here, here it is, there's four games left. If I was you as a senior guy, as one of the OGs, if I was you, I would call a team meeting and says, hey, look, we got four weeks left. Can we make sacrifices individually to this team to go out and do everything we have to do off the field to be great on the field, to have a possibility to win a division and get into the playoffs? That's me. Hey, man, 
No smoking, no drinking, no hanging out, no chasing women, all those things. Get your rest, eat right, be on time, be tentative, play with a sense of urgency, uh, uh, be responsible, all these things, okay? Be accountable, all these things. And I told him this. I said, it, it, it will, I, I think it will help this team if you have that. And I said, and in this same meeting, you, you, you do this. You tell each guy, look at the man to the right of you. Do you trust him? And if you don't trust each other, you tell them why. And then after you tell them why, you go, this is what I need from you for me to trust you. That way, and then you go, I don't want no arguing, no bickering, no, no excuses whatsoever. Listen to your teammate. Yeah. L listen to each other and then hold each other accountable after the meeting because you said to me, that I'm going to do what you said I need to do for you to trust me. So you hold each other accountable. So now when you play on Sunday, you've known that, hey, I just told this guy, I'm going to do it for him. He, I got to earn his trust. I'm, I'm not holding up my end of the bargain. He's holding up his, but I'm not holding up mine. Like you said, those defensive guys that came over, got those deals whatsoever, happy to be in Atlanta, you know, in, in Chocolate City and in and, 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 and Black Hollywood and, and enjoying all that. Oh, I'm in the A, you know, yeah. listen, uh -uh. <laughs> we don't play that. We don't, we don't play that. Look, you do all that when the season's over with. Right now, we expect you, we expect you to come in and, and be that dominant force that we expected you to be when we signed you in free agency. That's the thing. That's the thing. It's time for you to show up. Because let me tell you, most of you signed one-year deals. <laughs> you signed, and, mm -hmm. and, and I hate to talk about it because we talk about the cap room and all the money the Falcons going to have next year. But look, you get rid of some of those one-year deals, you're going to have a lot more money. A lot more money. So if you got four weeks to prove that you want to be a part of this and have a long-term deal. So not only are you playing for your playoff lives, you're playing for your football lives. And if, if you don't see that, you shouldn't be playing this game at all. You know, that means you're just playing it. You're just playing it. You're just being part of You're just happy to be part of the team collecting a check. That's not what we do here. That's not what we do. I see you were at the, uh, the the dinner last night, man of the year for Chris Lynch from dinner. You didn't get no inside yeah. info. We don't we don't know if this was these reports are true about Mariota or if the Falcons are gonna throw the ball more coming up since you got the talk. Well, first. but you know that 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 information about Mariota didn't come out until this morning. Yeah, all that chatter and or last night, late last night. Um, that chatter didn't come out until this morning. So I didn't get a chance to have that conversation um, or even try to get an insight of what was going on. So let's talk about the Mariota situation. Okay. I, we, we're going to play, we're going to play this little thing right now. Uh, William. Here it is. I'm sitting at home. I get a phone call from my former offensive coordinator. He's a new head coach of an NFL mm -hmm. team and I'm quarterback. Hey, man, we're going to sign you. I need you. You know me. You know what I expect. You know my offense. I need you. You're going to be my guy. You're going to be my guy to help turn this thing around. You, you're, here's your second chance. I'm giving you a second chance, and you're my guy. Mm -hmm. Coach, I'm there. I'm your guy. All of a sudden, he gets there. Mariota is our starter, point blank. This is not my guy. Bang, bang, bang. There's no questions. Ritter's not ready. This and that. Then we go fast forward. There's no way possible. There's no circumstances that Ritter will ever play. Mariota is my guy. He gets that meeting. Hey, we're going to go in a different direction. Uh, things are not going as what I expected, blah, blah, blah. You know, we're going to go with the young kid. So you're saying it's my fault. Mm -hmm. We lose in these games. Nobody else is taking responsibility. So everybody going to make me the scapegoat. I thought I was your man. I thought I was your guy. I thought you needed me to turn this thing around. Yeah. Now you're saying you don't? I'm Levi. So here's the question. And then the reports came out that 
he was going on IR because he was getting knee surgery. Yes. <clears throat> Remember when you and I text you, I said, okay, that's that's furthest from the truth. Yeah. I knew that was lame from the beginning. I knew that was lame. Then a report comes out that he left the team. When did he leave the team? Because you were on a bye week. So if you had this conversation with him Thursday, I'm thinking you had Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. Mm -hmm. And then meeting on Monday, and then you had today off. So, which is today is Tuesday. So did he just not show up Monday? But these reports came out before. These reports came out like yesterday sometime. So what, he didn't show up Monday? So I'm confused with the, with the timeline here. I'm, I'm very confused is, with the timeline. Sketchy. So on Thursday, on Thursday, when you told him that he's going to be <laughs> replacing a backup, yeah, he went on. A, he he left the building Thursday and had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. I ex expect right, mm -hmm. and then meetings on Monday. So he did he not show up on Monday meeting? So I we need clarification. In. Do you, do you think the head coach? Because of how this is all transpiring of him putting his feet in the sand, I'll never make a change, basically. And then now, you know, reports leaked from Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport last week that the Falcons were going to make the mm -hmm. change, even though the Falcons never said anything right. till Monday. Never said anything. Do you think that right. that his his arrogance maybe just kind of played a part in this whole scenario, this fiasco? Because how he went to injury to now – we're getting reports that oh he he just left he left like I, I just don't and, like I said it's it's not only I'm not only reports that he left if this is your guy and then then you go and say he quit on the team and you you rip him you know you you rip him oh you know you don't do that yes yeah, so that's the part that I'm confused that's an in house matter yeah that's that's an in house yeah. matter you don't you don't tell people that I rip you get on I rip I would never go on and say I rip my son because of such and such and such and such and such, such, such to anybody to you to the media yeah. whatsoever I, it's an in-house thing because now you 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 you're looking like well I, I love the guy I said there was no reason there was no circumstances that I would bench him now I did it he's left now I'm ripping him. Like he was the fault. See, he's a baby. He don't take responsibility. That's basically what you're saying. Mm. He quit on his teammates. I never thought he would be that type of person. That's almost what you're saying. I'm not saying that's what he said, but yeah, exactly. it, it, the implications of you ripping him, you can go and say, well, you know. And yeah, he specifically hey, said the really? injury. He's like, the injury, I can tell you, is not related to the change he has nothing to do with it he, right. so that's so vague like okay so why is well, this all coming out yeah, then yeah yeah what's well, all this stuff coming out when did he get hurt how how long has he been hurt all these things see see here's the thing and, and you remember i'm saying i said this long long time ago if you're gonna be a badass and you're gonna be a tough guy be that all the time mm -hmm. and you better win football games because people are going to question you down the road. So right now, you know, there's, there's, uh, I think it's a 50, 50 that says, Hey, he's a good coach. Give him a chance. We're going to have more salary cap room next year. And then there's a facet that says, hold up. Now I'm scratching my head. Wait a minute. Some of these <laughs> things just don't add up or match up. Is, is he really the right guy? Yeah. And I'm just saying, I'm, but, and, and, and I'm, I'm not on either side. I'm just talking. I'm just analyzing. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and here it is with your playoff lives and stake and you have this, disruption in your locker room that's not a good look that's not really a good look here's the time when you're coming off a of bye week where everybody's supposed to be together on the same page going in the same directions and refocus for these next four weeks but one game at a time and then at the end to see where you stand because it may come down to that last game to see who wins the division 
So how, right now it's it's you're in flux. You don't you know we we as 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 as, as fans and people looking on in from the outside is going. How do we turn this thing around? How, with all this, we haven't even we haven't even talked about the Saints game. No one is even talking about the Saints game. They're talking about this. That's a distraction. And that's this what is, I was going to ask you. Never going that type of. Go what, ahead. What What is the locker room? You know, what can they do right now to try to pull this together? Because, like you said, I would assume this is a distraction. You, you're not even focused right. on the Saints right now. You've been through quarterback changes well, in your career, so give us a little insight on what the the locker room might be like right now. Well, it's, it's, it's split. I'm telling you, it's, it's really split right now. And that's why when I told you I talked to one of the one of the players last night at the dinner, and I told him what needs to happen tomorrow, which is Wednesday, you're going to have to have a players-only meeting, and you guys going to have to get focused on the task at hand. And don't worry about all the outside chatter, blah, blah, blah. Because at the end of the day, you got to go out and play. You got to go out and perform. And you got to hope that everybody's on the same page, coaching staff included. Because if you don't, you know, you're going to be a sad Christmas. Be a sad, sad Christmas. Yeah, because like you said, it's, it's some insurmountable pressure now that they have placed upon Ritter. Up Falcons right. being back one game. You know yeah. the whole city is talking about it. I'm not sure they're talking about it. They're they're aware that right. you still have mm -hmm. an opportunity if y'all win these games. But rookie, right. no pressure. Just just go in New right. Orleans, beat them, then go right. to Baltimore right. and beat them. Right. And then you still have to worry about at home. But no one's but see, but no one's talking about Carolina that's sitting what three and one. They're so in the division. Yes, Carolina is ahead <laughs> of Atlanta right now. And they have the time. Yes. So if God forbid right. they both finish, Atlanta and Carolina yeah. finish with the same record, Carolina at this point would mm -hmm. would go because they have a better divisional record. They still have two games against right. one against Carolina at Tampa and one against New Orleans. But yeah. the way they've been but playing, still, they've been playing yeah. our style of football, smash mouth, controlling mm -hmm. the game. Ball control. Ball control. Mm -hmm. and, and relying on their defense. And that's the thing right now, deep, the defense. See, I'm not worried about the offense as much because we're going to do what we do. Mm -hmm. We know who we are offensively, but we still don't know who we are defensively this late in the year yeah. because we haven't had yeah. that really solid defensive effort where we kind of shut people out and shut people down and made plays when it counted. You see what I'm saying? So it needs to happen this week against the Saints team. It needs to happen this week it, because right now it's, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is a must win, a must win. You don't win this one, it's yeah, over. I, think it's over. I, I hate to say it, it's, it's pretty much over if you don't win this one. And people can chime in and say, well, if this happened and this happened, why would you want to play for ifs and buts? Yeah. Do your job. Do your job, win the games, and then see what happens. Don't say, well, if they lose, such and such lose, and this lose, we're still, uh-uh, 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 mm -mm. I don't want to hear that. What I want to hear, win the game. Yeah. Win these games, and then see what happens after 17 weeks of football or 17 games, and see where we are, and see if we've made the, made the dance. I don't, I don't want to hear about the ifs and the buts and the whats and the wins, <laughs> and I don't want to hear that. Just win football games. That's what I want. Just win football games. And the the Saints, they're they're not like. I mean, first off, anybody in our division is not top tier. We'll go ahead and say no, that. No, there's not a team no. right now in our division that's going to win the Super Bowl. You know, it's it's sad to say, yeah. but yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll get a I, home game by I, default, whoever it may be. Yeah. But it, it could be. I know, would be a little games. more caught. I'd be a little more comfortable if Jameis Winston was playing quarterback. Because he will throw it to this you. week, because uh, <laughs> uh, Andy Dalton is playing decent football, mm -hmm. uh, and Kamara, you got your Kamara, and the receivers are playing well. Defense is who they are; they just they're really, really good and really, really solid. 
you know, here's the thing, though, but they make mistakes. When I say they make mistakes, they make big mistakes and penalties, like personal foul penalties and, yes. and those sorts of things. So we have to keep our cool because they're going to do some things to try to get you out of your game. So especially this rivalry game, you're going to have to keep your cool in this game because they even think they have a chance of winning the division. So, you know, right now, these division games matter. So keep your cool. Do what we do. Don't make any mistakes. Don't turn the ball over. Win the third down bat battle and score in touchdowns in the red zone, and we'll come home a winner. If uh, the Saints would have won that game, I think we would all be tied right now. Um, yeah. They beat yeah. Tampa. They Isn't that crazy? Tampa come back. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Crazy. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> and you, you listen to, you watch all the shows, and they talk about the worst, you know, the, the, the worst division in, in football, and they talk, talk about the NFC South. But you got to remember, at one point, the NFC South was the cream of the crop because yes. every year we had a team going to the Super Bowl and right. playing in the NFC Championship That's right. game. Okay, yeah, it, it happens. It turns a little bit. But it, it'll come back. It'll come back. And and, and I, I, I seen something the other day that said that I forgot who lost, that now we're in the top 10 in draft order, in picks, the top 10 picks in the draft. We don't want that. We don't want that. And even if we're there, I hope that we trade down, save some money, and get more picks, more third, fourth round picks, and to help build this roster um, for the long haul. I agree. And I hope that at these next four weeks, I, I mean, I hope we win, but if we don't, I hope we can get a good enough look at Ritter and what he's capable of before going into the draft, because these mock draft specialists already got us taking a quarterback at 10. And it's just, there's, there's, there's no way there's, there's no way this organization drafts a quarterback in the first round. There's, there's, there's not even a chance I don't care if they had the number one pick in the draft. There's not a chance this organization takes a quarterback after taking one in the third round that is sufficient enough to win games by himself with his arm that and intelligent enough to win football games if you put the right pieces around him. We're not, not talking about a guy that just can't play football. Yeah. You know, this is a guy that... Yeah. Had his team in in the top twenty five for three years in a row, you know, made the the playoffs, made the championship playoffs just the year prior. Played so we're not Alabama. talking about a guy that can't play. play. Yeah, we ain't talking about a guy that can't play football. Mm -hmm. You know, you just got to find a way to to put the right pieces around him, the right scheme around him. Case in point, look at Purdy at San Francisco. What he did to Tampa Bay. Yes. This past weekend, that system fits that quarterback, and he was a Mister Irrelevant, and he goes out and does what he, he does. And you tell me that quarterback is better than our Ritter? No, he just the the got that great defense that sets him up, got those great players around him that all he has to do is make sure, make sure you're reading right and put the ball in the players' hands, and they would do the rest. Yeah. And that's what we need to see happen next year. There needs to be some dudes around Ritter and a great defense for him to be successful. I, I hope that we can see what Arthur Smith wanted his offense to be, you know, a good run game, right. but when it's time to pass, right. that quarterback makes that yeah. pass. I hope, I hope that, yeah, that he's completing 65. Yes. Plus. I hope yeah. All the weapons are getting used, you know, spreading the ball around. Right. Yes. Not putting us down. Well, I, I think I, I think he'll get the ball out quicker than Mariota because he is a true passer uh, for what we've seen. And I go, we can talk about preseason, but still it matters because you see the kid drop back and throw the ball with confidence yeah. and throw it on time and where it's supposed to be. Um, I know in the season the game picks up and he hasn't played all season, so that that first series he's going that stuff going to be going. So you bet you have to put him in a good rhythm to, to he gets used to the speed of the game. Right. 
Well, what you got for us to end the show today? You know, I always, you know, sometimes your your flesh takes over. It takes over your spirit because, you know, here's a cycle and, and, and you, here's a cycle right now where there's a lot of college openings, uh, coaching, coaching openings, and even some, you know, opportunity to coach on a college team. Yeah. And through, the, through this cycle, you know, you, 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 you feel that you've done everything that you have to do. You've done everything that they told you you need to do to be a head coach, to be a coach, period. You've done everything. Your resume says it. Your, your references says it. You know, people that know you says it. But you keep getting passed over. You keep getting passed over and you get frustrated. And you want to say, Lord, what is it? What else more I have to do? And then as I was thinking about that before I came on, I was reading and, and I read something. It hit and it said, hey, you think I'm not with you, but I'm with you. I'm preparing something for you that you don't even know about. Trust me. That's what that word said. It said, trust me. And I was like, oh, my goodness. As I was getting upset, stressed, and, and, and I said, wow. And then this word came to me and it says, trust me. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And then I said something. I said, oh, once I, I T.D. Jakes, I was watching T.D. Jakes on Sunday. T.D. Jakes says, you know what? I've knocked on doors. for." He says, he says, you knocked on doors for so long and so long, and they get cracked open, and you're halfway in, and they shut it back, and you have to go back out. He says, right now, he says, you have so much grace in you, so much grace of God in you. Next time, kick the door down off the hinges and they can't <laughs> lock you out. <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> I said, so, so what that tells me is when that door opens and, and, and you need to be heard, make sure you're prepared, you're ready, you're solid, you're confident, and then they can't lock you out. They mm -hmm. can't lock you out because the grace of God is with you. There you go. Appreciate that, T, as always. Yeah, man. I just want to say, you know, everybody's making a whole uproar about Dion and going to Colorado, but there's a guy sitting across mm -hmm. from me that wanting a job could be a coach anywhere, Power 5, HBCU, wherever. So y'all look at Terrence Matheson and give this man a call because there's yeah. plenty of players like yeah, himself that that can do the job. So come on now. Let, exactly. Let's open, open these doors. Yeah. Open these doors. We, we, it's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. Well, All I'm right, going to kick them off the hinges. <laughs> yes. That's right. All right, All right. Hey, hey, we got to get hey, one man. this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, we're pulling for you. Yep. All right. Peace.